Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's live cast of the Spy Party Competitive League Season 5 Tournament of Position. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Tournament of Position is a postseason event where uh, the top players from each of the lower divisions are competing to earn spots to promote all the way up to gold, uh, with spots also available in silver, bronze, and copper. Joining me today are Casters Dowsey. Hello, how are you and doing? And Warning Track. Great to be here. Very excited for this And match. today we have a match between Iggy the Grifter, uh, who placed third in Copper Division, versus Ascend Beyond, who completely dominated Obsidian. Uh, can you guys tell me a little bit about the players we have today? Yeah, it's a really interesting one here because, like you mentioned, Ascend and Beyond almost a, a spy party prodigy. We've got quite a few of them in the tournament of position tournament, uh, tournament so far, and we've seen some of them rise and some of them not quite make it just yet. Um, Ascend did falter in their first round one match versus Pox, a very close 9-6, uh, I believe it is, or 8-6 even, because Pox was the highest seed. Um, and so that was really their first test against a, a more experienced veteran of Spy Party competition. Uh, whereas Iggy, like you mentioned, placed third in Copper, um, which was a very competitive division morning track. And I feel that that might give them uh, a bit more mental fortitude when it comes to these longer sets. Yeah, we see a lot of players, uh, yourself included, last season, for example, they get very good at this game very fast, a lot of knowledge, a lot of execution, high-level skill, all that stuff. But what you can't rush is experience and mental fortitude. And as you mentioned, even though these divisions may be sometimes very competitive, uh, the level uh, of competition can vary quite a bit. So what I'm looking for here is, like you said, Iggy having to be in a much more competitive division, how will they respond to pressure and adversity, which are two things Ascend Beyond has not had to encounter very much, dominating a relatively weak and with a lot of forfeits in it, Obsidian Division. And the players are drafting right now. We have the first bans coming in. Iggy the Grifter has chosen to ban Gallery, any four of eight, and Ascend Beyond banning Aquarium. Yep, I mean, the uh, Gallery ban is, is something that... Um, Ascend has kind of dominated on this season, high sniper win rate, fairly decent, com uh, assistant mission completions for spy win rate as well. Um, and if you're not very comfortable in a venue like Gallery, it's just something you never want to play. Yeah, I'm one of those players, and I ban it quite a lot for that very reason. I'm okay at it, but it's a little uncomfortable. It's a strange feeling venue. Interesting, though, that Iggy is one of just a few players this season who has uh, rejected the option to ban multiple times, but... Mm -hmm. No more messing around today, not against Ascend Beyond. Gotta ban one of their favorite venues. Uh, don't get too And cute. we have the double picks coming in from both players. Iggy has chosen to double High Rise, and Ascend Beyond has doubled Courtyard. Interesting High Rise pick here, just due to the fact that Iggy's played it a decent amount this season and doesn't have a super strong sniper win rate. Fairly consistent spy win rate, which may be able to help them against the dominating 76% uh, sniper win rate Ascend has boasted in Obsidian this uh, season. And I suppose if you are playing three of fives, uh, and we know that Iggy um, is a three of five monster, you know, most famous for liking pub, even though we probably won't see it today, um, then it makes sense you, you try and play to your strengths here. The question is, Track, is it a real strength or is it a, a comfort strength? Yeah, it might be a relative strength, too. It might not be a great choice, but it might be better than some of their other options. But it's kind of a perfect storm for Iggy. It's something they like to play, regardless of how strong they are on it, necessarily. And it's also something that counters Ascend Beyond's particularly dominating sniper. So uh, I think it's probably a smart choice, but it's a very high-risk one, too. And so the single picks are coming in. From Iggy, we have Ballroom, Ascend Beyond picks Library, and the final pick from Iggy is Terrace, and Ascend Beyond follows it up with Modern. <laughs> this Terrace meta that's been introduced by the, the newer Wave Spy Party competitive players is really interesting. Can't wait to see that if we get that far. Um, real quickly, Ascend Beyond, Monster on Courtyard, uh, a total of 77% sniper win rate, 71% spy win rate. That's a huge double pick for Ascend Beyond, one that you have to be pretty scared of. But look at this. Very small data, three on both sides for Iggy, 100% win rate on Courtyard. So <laughs> this yeah. is kind of potentially going to be the best double Courtyard we've ever seen. Well, it's an obvious choice for Ascend Beyond. They've only played eight Courtyard games as Sniper. Technically, they've won seven, but the only one they lost was to a white Purloin where they just didn't shoot during the countdown for some reason. And by all right. 
yeah, they had the spy dead to right, so they could be an easy eight for eight on Courtyard, and that's what you expect. You see that in all their choices, Library, Courtyard, Modern. These are good, heavy sniper, kind of camping-friendly venues, and then you see their opponent, Iggy, going the polar opposite in every single choice. So right. this is a war over what kind of games of Spy Party they even want to play. Yeah, both players certainly leaning into their strengths here. And you can tell uh, through the the fact that Assembion is picking Modern for a finishing venue that uh, you, you've got to a position where Ascend kind of considers them to be the favorite uh, in this, this match and they want to finish strong if they are close in points. You, you kind of pick Modern last if you think you're going to be up so you can go Sniper Party and win the series through that. Yeah, absolutely. That's the plan. The plan is to have a lead there or to be able to win through a tie or what have you. That's that's definitely the idea when you pick Modern later. But all the picks really kind of fit here uh, with what Ascend Beyond wants to do. And Iggy's picks fit, fit what Iggy wants to do. Uh, and somebody's going to have to come out on top. Great. And I do have the players in game just setting up the first game on High Rise now. Are both of you in? Yes. Perfect. Right, I assume sorry. this uh, mission setup is probably going to change, though, the one we're looking at right now. Bug contact fingerprint purloin swap? What do you mean? Swap is <laughs> clearly <laughs> one of the more viable options on, on high rise, any three or five. Um, I kid, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely going to be considered here. I mean, a lot of people uh, potentially don't know what the tournament position is all about. It's a 16-player competition to try and get promotion at the end of the season. First seeds in their division uh, were offered a choice of just automatic, uh, automatically promoting into the, the next division above them or playing in the tournament position with the potential to get a higher um, promotion. And so for Ascend Beyond being an Obsidian, um, they want to try and get higher than the, the Iron Division above them. Um, unfortunately for them, they haven't won a match yet, but if they were to win this match uh, versus Iggy the Grifter, they would actually get promoted into Iron automatically due to the fact that they are below uh, Copper Division. And if you beat anyone higher than you, if you're below Copper Division, then you get an automatic promotion. So for Ascend Beyond, not only do you want to win this match and secure your first uh, promotion, uh, maybe not the way to do it for Ascend Beyond, a takeover and then potentially forgetting that you have to move after that, standing next to the Ambassador right at the start of the game, but somehow we don't get a highlight and it seems like Iggy potentially just let it slide. Well, it's still just time of chaos. You can get away with some pretty crazy stuff in the time of chaos. And it turns out the mission setup is the standard mission setup. Bug the only hard tell on, fingerprint and inspect both there. So there will be, in all likelihood, frame opportunities. We're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Have to see how Ascend Beyond wants to play this game as Spy. High Rise offers a lot of uh, flexibility to your, your play style. Do you want to try a mission complete? Or are you more interested in staring down the party and trying to accumulate suspicion from the sniper's perspective and then push for frames onto those targets? We've wasted quite a lot of our early game here, about a minute just idling here, potentially now picking up our first flirt. A green test puts us up to 40, which is much needed because now we can get those uh, close white flirts and make sure it's a, a three flirt later on in the game. Yeah, plenty of time to finish Flirt on High Rise if you make even a modest effort. And as you say, you need to watch the party, look for frame targets, and there's also mission completion. The best spies can do both simultaneously. A lot easier to do the former right now because this is not a very busy party. There are no fingerprints, there are no inspects, no BB has been taken yet. Uh, pretty dull. Yeah, we potentially missed one of the best opportunities for a contact of the double agent that we would have had this game. Everyone was in conversation. Instead, Assembion's going to recognize that this party's not really offering anything, and now they have to make the decision to make mission completion themselves. Stepping into statues here, double set of inspects coming through, and then we can look to go straight back on over to our seduction target and pick up a nice close foot. Uh, Taff there had a chance at a really good walking bug and does have a highlight, so Iggy might be particularly suspicious of them. And yeah, the inspect clearly a nod to the docile party, uh, doesn't want to get caught waiting for a frame that is never viable. I have to see if Ascend Beyond wants the bug here. It's a really interesting decision. It's his most used hardtail in uh, Spy Party competitive league so far. But my understanding of Iggy is that the one thing that Iggy watches more than anything in the world is the bug. And so if Ascend Beyond is planning on using Bug the Ambassador as a, a mission to try and gain progress and hide uh, hardtail progress as well in this series, then they've potentially picked the wrong opponent to do it. And We'll have to see if Ascend Beyond will adapt, if that's something they recognize from their research or preparation into this match, or if they're going to be burned by Iggy's excellent bug watching skills. 
It might be hard to resist even if they are excellent at bug because they complete bug, as Beyond does, uh, almost 60% of the time, which is one of the higher rates in all of SCL. But there's a reason that they've done so well and bug so often. It's because it's a really powerful mission. You can get it by snipers even when they're camping it sometimes. 45 seconds done and uh, inspects are now completed. One more flirt with our seduction target will complete seduce as well. But Seek was very unlikely to leave that window painting before we could get the flirt. So we decided to defer that for now. We can head on over a very crowded three man window pad at the side of the high rise window. 26 seconds and now we have to try and find a mission completion doesn't look like double agents in conversation but they step in at the last second instead we go for the bug here going to be right past the ambassador did iggy see it is the question no doesn't seem likely here and that's going to be a send beyond picking up the first spy win of the series Silent games on high rise are so powerful. Even if you're camping bug, that's just a really good bug. And as I mentioned, there were bug paths from other characters earlier in the game. And if you didn't shoot then, why would you want to shoot now? Even camping the bug, bug can be that good, especially when you're that good at bugging. That is Ascend Beyond playing the game they want to play. We mentioned this game, this match was going to be a war between these conflicting play styles. Well, that's a perfect example. Like you said, Iggy camping a mission. Ascend Beyond loves to do that mission. So something's got to give. It turns out Iggy's the one that gives first. Yeah, and it's very surprising and potentially worrying for Iggy's sniper if the mission that you so successfully catch in your spy party competitive league matches is that bug. Now you've let one through in your first sniper game. The mental aspect of uh, failing at something you consider very strong for yourself can be quite hurting, especially on a three or five venue like High Rise, where you kind of can anticipate that someone might just go three one four zero in that 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 pick. And so we'll have to see if Iggy can bounce back here. A, a strong spy win, uh, potentially a frame and a miss shot, a sieve shot uh, coming through from ascend could be a real good way for Iggy to gain confidence in their play again. Yeah, that's a heck of a punch in the mouth in the first game, and really you need a counter punch. Iggy, though, likes to slow play at the beginning of high rise, fish for low lights, and that has worked for them. I don't know if it's going to work against a, a sniper of a Send Beyond's caliber, though. Lots of early highlights coming through here onto Statue Visitors. We have Plain Twin, our seduction target, as well as the small man at Statues. Three at bookshelves. Woo woo! Green bookshelf. Very busy here. But it doesn't seem like any suspicion has been attributed for that apart from a highlight onto general who was potentially flirting with someone at the green bookshelf here's our first flirt and ascend beyond's going to highlight for it here watching flirt like a hawk and of course you have to on high rise you have to there's sometimes there's nothing else to watch but in this case it's still pretty impressive they are highlight for a potential flirt with their seduction target and they have Ooh. no flirt done that's a cute little bug walking into her conversation but unfortunately the wrong arm for it and Assembion's going to see it stick right out onto their screen and shoot quite early and it's all the worse because they were staring at them because they just given them that highlight sometimes when you get a highlight for something soft like that like a possible flirt pairing after a few seconds they sort of forget about you and they revisit it later but in this case it was in the wake of the highlight a highlight that they probably did not guess they had so it was all the more visible and ascend beyond is up to nothing just like that 2 nothing on Iggy the Grifter's pick of High Rise. Played a bit of a warm-up match with Iggy just to test the guy, see exactly what uh, we had here before this match. And it was a, a venue that he wasn't sure if he wanted to pick into a Sam Beyond. And now that you're 2-0 down, that could hurt your uh, feelings going into the rest of the series. Of course, though, this is the best of 16. It's uh, longer matches in the tournament position, the postseason of SEL, meaning that you have a lot of time to bring it back. Yeah, one or two bad games don't sink you. There's plenty of time to reverse the momentum. A lot of swings in a given match, and that's an early highlight for a fingerprint. Fingerprint on the briefcase return. Ascend Beyond now stepping in towards the blue bookshelf to try and just idle out in this game here. Seduction target taking a drink could be an indication they leave the conversation, but instead they stick, allowing Ascend Beyond to get nice and close and personal, start up that flotation with a white test. Yeah, and there's going to be a fingerprint on green bookshelf as well. It's about to be smudged by one of the double agents, but maybe that's what you want if you're a send beyond. Maybe you want that difficult for the win. Let something cook for a while. Though the ambassador is just putting their hands on everything. That's what you want to see when you get that early fingerprint. Yeah, unfortunately, that green bookshelf fingerprint will be gone as soon as Queen places the book back into the bookshelf. A bit of a change to fingerprints on this build does mean that they disappear very quickly at books, but that right statue has one on them, and you can imagine that Ascend Beyond will be keeping track of where these fingerprints are so that they can finish that mission up 
on high rise of course a uh, fingerprint can be quite a strong mission due to the fact that ais do complete fingerprint quite often and it means that snipers feel um forced to either shoot for ais completing fingerprint or ignore ais completing fingerprint yeah, obviously, Send Beyond, as you said, is going to be watching and knows where that print is. On the other hand, based on that early briefcase highlight, pretty good bet that Iggy knows it's there too and will be all over it if they go for it. Send Beyond has a very high mission complete rate in SEL. Really likes to try and complete as spy. And on a venue like High Rise, that means that he's more likely to not uh, go in towards the framing route here. That briefcase is now gone from the statue and now Send can step on in and pick up the fingerprint as well as a set of inspects for ourselves here as well. We'll need to get one more set if we were to complete that red inspect does mean that we're probably just going to bail on the idea of double inspecting here and go for the fingerprint instead. There it is. The fingerprint does come through. I'm going to put the statue back, but it looks like Iggy's just taking the shot regardless. Completes fingerprint and decides, yeah, yeah, that's enough to take the shot. I guess they're just thinking too many coincidences. I'm worried I missed a bug or something like that. I would say a little aggressive. The odds that you miss that much, especially when you highlight them that early. So we know they've been watching them, but maybe just confident in those mission tendencies. We mentioned that they like fingerprint. Both of these players like fingerprint quite a bit. Send Beyond is just not even waiting. Yeah, not at all. That was a fairly aggressive spy game. A lot of activity and activity on high rise could be an indicator that you're looking at a spy. Iggy certainly felt so, takes a shot. And that's going to restore some faith in them, especially considering the mission count was low. I feel like when I get a sniper win, when the mission count is low, I feel all over the spy and that helps me get back on top of my mentality. Now Iggy has the chance to spy and bring this series back to a tie. It feels great when it works, but I've cast a lot of matches where someone takes shots like that early on and you think, wow, they're totally onto them. And then they shoot sieves later and you realize, okay, it's just aggressive shooting and sometimes you're right and sometimes you're not. So hard to say which it is until we see some more examples. But in this case, I don't know if it's going to matter if they're up 3 nothing already. First flirt comes through here for Iggy onto our seduction target, the twin. And a very quick stop talk as well. Wasn't watching hard enough to know if it was justified, but... Regardless of it is or not, you're kind of relying on your sniper here to know full etiquette rules when you stop talk like that. And so you're playing a bit of a gamble. Does Ascend Beyond know that I was justified in stop talking or am I just being rude here and potentially bringing suspicion to myself? Yep, and there is a print on the far statue, the same one that got Ascend shot in the last game. And you really want to let those cook for a while. You want to let those sit uh, on high rise because they usually can, especially on that far statue or on some of these bookshelves. Statues more than bookshelves for the reason you alluded to earlier, the change in the new build and the way fingerprints are handled on bookshelves. Uh, but if you go for them quickly, uh, at that point, you're either a really, really lucky, unlucky AI or you're the spy. Iggy picks up the fingerprint on this green book there. I was wondering if they were going to rush fingerprint by going for the briefcase here. There is an opportunity potentially to pick up the briefcase and attempt to difficult. The double agent did just smudge it. We would have to beat our seduction target to the briefcase though. And it doesn't look like we're going to be able to. Instead, stepping on towards the statue here. Is there a fingerprint here as well? There is. Wow, lots of mission progress being completed by Iggy the Grifter, which kind of goes against what I was expecting from them here on high rise. I was considering that they might even just hide all it out, warning track, and try and get a sieve shot. Yeah, Iggy played the first high rise spy game like they've been playing high rise as spy all season. This time they're playing differently. In fact, they're playing this game almost exactly like Ascend just did, doing the exact thing they shot them for, even getting their second fingerprint on the exact same statue around the same time. Let's see how aggressive Iggy wants to be here. You could just step over to a statue, pick up your statue inspect completes, and then idle in a conversation with your seduction target and really just dare the sniper to shoot you here. I wouldn't imagine contact would be the successful route for the spy, but I could misspeak here. That's inspects completed, a minute and 20 seconds left, and if you're going to go the flirting option, you have to complete that very shortly. There's a little flash from Ascend Beyond. They are all over this fingerprint, and I can't imagine they're going to get two talks off now, let alone a banana bread. Yeah, potentially just dead here on this first flirt at a minute and three seconds. Here it comes. We'll have to shoot before uh, 53 seconds if we believe this flirt is a mission completion, and we don't shoot here, so that's a bit of a saving grace for Iggy. We're going to have plenty of time to pick up our last flirt onto a seduction target here. The timing also going to favor us due to the fact that there won't be any overtime beeps later on into this mission completion. But that flash, like you mentioned, does say that Ascend Beyond is very likely on top of this. 
So Dr. Shatari is going to step away, but then rejoin the conversation. We're just, and that actually provides a really good Perfect. opportunity here to get the flirt way earlier than expected. You have to go for this now. Try and push the sniper off the suspicion that you're completing flirt on a normal time here. Here it comes. That's going to be mission complete. 10 seconds to make the shot. If Ascend Beyond believes Iggy is complete here, Sniper's kind of glancing, but it doesn't look like a shot's coming through. And Iggy is going to tie things back up to a piece on high rise. That's huge for Iggy, and that's got a sting. When Ascend Beyond sees that screen pop up, that he was clearly the top suspect there, just not willing to shoot for the flirts alone, clearly banking on the banana bread for the shot, even though we'd already seen a silent mission win on high rise. Really interesting the way they're sort of mirroring each other. It's almost like they're playing these mind games. Would I do what you just did? And in this case, Iggy did, and it worked. And even though they only split their venue choice, given that they started off down 2 nothing, they'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. And now we move on to Courtyard, where huge statistics have been posted through the regular season of SEL. Like we mentioned, uh, Ascend Beyond has played this venue quite a lot over his time here, a total of 16 games across the season for a 75% overall win rate on Courtyard. Iggy the Grifter only played six games this season so far on Courtyard, but 100% win rate on courtyard and so both going into a venue that typically is very linear and doesn't seem like many options are available both with ridiculously high win rates as well have to see which one can trump the other in this this battle of courtyard what's interesting is they might have different views of courtyard because in copper spy and snipers this season won it about 50 50 but in obsidian where ascend beyond hails from 65 35 sniper so an Obsidian, very sniper favored, but in Copper, pretty even, which makes me wonder whether or not they're going to approach this a little differently in terms of spy win viability. Here comes the game being set up here. A bit of replay watching, making sure that we're on top of everything. As Ascend Beyond will step into the spy role as Walt here. Mr. A, the very atypical spy in Spy Party. Baby's first spy, you could say. For that, you know... Uh, if you've ever watched a promotional video for Spy Party, this is the, the guy that is the spy. And I can remember when I first started playing Spy Party, he was the most suspicious because he just looked like a, a spy role. And so you wanted to shoot him for that. Yeah, if you look up spy in the dictionary, there's a picture of this character right next to it. Good uh, first flirt here. And the seduction target leaves us as well, which can be quite beneficial. It means that Ascend can step over to the other conversation. Maybe you don't want to chase immediately, and that's fine. You have to respect some players' ability to flirt pair, especially on Courtyard, where you have very good um, vision of the party uh, whenever you are looking directly at the action. Ascend's actually idling way longer than I anticipated here. We have the double agent in conversation, and you can see from Ascend's camera that we're setting up for paths yeah, ready right. to go. There's the contact, and it's a fairly good one. Only a couple of lowlights available for us, and no one who had statue highlights knocked out either. Excellent banana bread, yeah. And by the way, I find it very interesting. I mentioned Ascend Beyond's only courtyard sniper loss was on a held shot on a white purloin uh, earlier this season against a headhunter. And now you see a held shot on high rise. So if there's any weakness from Ascend Beyond here, maybe a little too cautious as sniper sometimes, lets their top suspect get away with things in the end of the game. Stepping onto the other side of the conversation circle, uh, Irish between us, but due to the way that this conversation circle is laid out, it's very small, meaning that even though we don't seem like we're standing directly next to our seduction target, we actually get max flirt range through that. The green test on top of that, up to 83%, going to help us out a lot. Yeah, we're bouncing around a little bit here, but Ascend Beyond actually playing a much more passive game than they usually have. As you mentioned, great mission complete. Basically every mission completed about a fourth of the time or better other than swap. So just a lot of activity. Oh boy. Wow. It's an interesting one here. Ascend Beyond will step into the statues and... Doesn't seem like the path was credited as suspicious, at least. Iggy is not showing us any indication that it were. Courtyard? This is the first swap that Ascendion has attempted on Courtyard. SEL so far this season. It's going to be a green test as well. We'll have to see if it's successful. Yeah, only complete swap 12% of the time across all venues even. It's far and away their least completed mission. Every other mission at least a third of the time. I guess that's the point. They idled early. Maybe even fishing for a low light, I don't know. And then swapped later. This is an atypical counterplay here from Ace Ooh. Ascend Beyond. That was on screen, but at the end of the animation cycle for Wheels, it looks like Iggy is considering whether the fade was green or not, but is pausing for half a second here, wants to get more information. Wow. Wants to know if Wheels is the spy or if it is indeed. Next Ascend person Beyond to do something gets shot. A. 
Gonna try and chase our seduction target over to the window, and that should be the indicator for the shot here. Iggy takes it successfully and going to find himself up in the series for the first time. Three in a row after an 0-2 hole. And yeah, I think that was just next person to do something dies. And it's going to be Iggy rather than the green swapper wheels. Uh, I'm a little surprised the shot didn't come off right away. Waiting for one more thing dangerous. Obviously possible. The flirt could have been done there. But we're seeing a lot of patience from the snipers early on in this set. Yeah, we are. And you're right. It's very possible that we two flirted. Uh, with two green tests there, and that was mission win for Ascend Beyond. Iggy decides to, I guess, bet on the higher probability that people don't hit green tests every time they do a mission, but <laughs> that's burnt me in the past, especially versus you wanting track on venues like Balcony, where you just seem to green test every time. So you have to be a little bit concerned that if Ascend Beyond hits more greens, does that mean that they win? Is that really just the, the secret to beating Iggy here? on courtyard and other venues is hit more greens. Well, it certainly helps. What I find interesting about that sort of thing is you obviously you can't afford to always shoot assuming greens, but you have to be willing to do it sometimes. It's very opponent specific, but it's one of those things you need to research specifically because we don't have easily uh, researchable numbers on it right now. So if you are doing your homework against your opponent, you're going to have a good sense of their AT rate and you can adjust accordingly as sniper. Iggy, the grifter, has played the exact same courtyard spy Every time they played Courtyard this season, they've bugged, they've contacted, they've inspected, and then sometimes they've flirted, and sometimes they've not been able to get that flirt completion. They've been forced to take a second hard tell in the form of a purloin. We'll have to see if Iggy can find the bug that they want. I'm gonna start things off with a white test contact. Red yeah, test right. contact, in fact, cough, cough. Was that seen? Doesn't seem like the cough was seen which is lucky for Iggy the Grifter, but is going to provide extra low light for Ascend Beyond. This is how you know Ascend Beyond is a good sniper already. They did the smart, safe thing. Here are the people I'm basically positive could not have coughed. Don't try to tunnel on someone. Just take the free low lights and move on. And now the party's narrowed down already. That's what you want to do when you don't think you've actually seen the cough. And you're right, when they can't complete Seduce, they purloin instead. Their rates of completion on those two almost identical this season. But late purloins on Courtyard are the desperation of a panic move, and they almost never work, even though it's the only thing that's beaten Ascend Beyond a sniper on Courtyard so far this season. Hit the green test on our flirt here, meaning that we can complete it in one more go from any side of a conversation. A red test purloin comes through. Oh no, the action test doesn't seem to be with us. The flashing guest list as well. Now it's gone. And Ascend Beyond not going to allow purloin to burn them again. We'll take the shot onto Iggy to tie things back up. It's funny that Purloin interrupted the question I was going to ask, which is how suspicious do they think they are for the cough? That's the real question. When a spy does something like that, do they assume it was caught or not? Do they continue progressing or do they lay low? In this case, they kept their foot on the pedal, unfortunately hit that AT red, and it was just unmistakable for Send Beyond. Way too easy. Two red tests on key missions that can burn you. Iggy the Grifter not quite hitting the action tests, maybe getting unlucky with their positions, but also potentially nervous and shaky here. Losing their round one match to Cotty, the Iron Division winner, potentially could have put them down in the dumps here. Of course, the Sembion lost their round one match against Pox, but uh, potentially expected due to the fact that Pox has been such a solid SEL competitor over two seasons now, coming second in Challenger and coming third, I believe, just barely due to a tiebreaker between Rio uh, in bronze this season. Now, both these players looking for their first win in the tournament position. And of course, for uh, Pox, unfortunately, I believe, at this stage, they can't achieve promotion out of bronze. They needed to win their round one match to be in contest for that. Ascend Beyond has everything to play for here. A win here promotes them out of Obsidian, and then further wins in the tournament position could push them all the way up to bronze. Yeah, this is an absolutely pivotal match for them, and it's kind of a shame that one of these two good players is going to have to start 0-2. Iggy, also fighting for that bronze. I somehow managed to pretend like we were casting Pox here. My brain went to, to places unseen, but that's fine. We can come back to Earth real quickly, and it is going to be Ascend Beyond picking up their second flirt onto our seduction target here. A very slow courtyard game, one where you just complete your soft tells and think about your hard tell at the end when the sniper is on edge. Looks like Ascend Beyond will step in for the statue here, and really good timing on this if we can just flirt 
a swap and run. Iggy hasn't seen us here yet. Just get out of there. Let someone else swap that statue and inspect on the other side. And Sembion realizes the gift that Iggy has given them with some poor laser rotation and is going to do exactly that. We can step in for our last flirt and then look to finish with inspects at statues. That's because the guest list and the ambassador were on the other side, and this is something Ascend Beyond did really well earlier this season in particular. They have a great sense of what is oh, dividing no. the sniper's attention. A little bit too far away for that flirt, something that could burn you here. We don't have much time left in this game, and we've taken a drink as well. Really, Ascend Beyond seems to be trying to get the AI shot that swapped the statue, but Iggy hasn't shown any realization that that statue has indeed swapped. It is Buns there, Miss B, who swapped the statue. Here come the low lights. Right they saw it. They just saw it. Who will be the other person, the consideration? SM Beyond gets low lit here. You've achieved our mission, but we still are not quite at a place where Wheels we can is gonna block the inspect. Yet. Wheels blocks the inspect, and we also need to get a flirt as well. Ascend Beyond could be throwing away a perfect spy game on Courtyard. 20 seconds now. Do we three cycle for the inspect? We do. Here it comes. Inspect comes through. Now we have to get the flirt. 12 seconds left on the clock, and the suction target is quite close. We can get there, but there's going to be overtime. Buns is talking during the overtime. Potentially, this means a bun shot comes through, and Ascend Beyond is saved. That's exactly what means. That's going to be the shot coming through, and Ascend Beyond finds the spy win here on courtyard is going to go up with a spy win buns made it a lot easier but they were going to win either way just by getting away with that swap ascend beyond has done this actually all season every time multiple threats are on the other side of the venue usually on something like veranda when the ambassador and toby are on the same side they will microfilm on the opposite side they show tremendous awareness as spy of both cover and and divided sniper attention based on threat. In this case, two of the three hardtail threats were on one side of the venue. The spy Ascend Beyond was on the other, taking the free swap. Didn't actually rush it. Almost ruined by wheels, but going for a three cycle there at the end of the game, actually the smart decision, and it works just barely. Just barely get away with that green swap. We could have played it faster, but it seems like Ascend Beyond pacing almost perfectly with the intention of hardtail and then just getting burnt with a bit of a placement issue towards the end iggy can tie this back up so far they have only lost one spy game on courtyard and that was just a couple of minutes ago we'll have to see exactly how iggy wants to play this going to start off with a huge 51 percent flirt a green test to kick head off here yeah, Iggy with only one spy loss on Courtyard, Ascend Beyond with only one sniper loss on Courtyard. Again, I say, something's gotta give. At this point, Ascend Beyond has swapped twice on Courtyard for the first time in SEL. And like you mentioned earlier, it's just a mission that Ascend Beyond does not complete very often at all. Potentially, the research has shown that Iggy has a real hole for the swap and they want to exploit it. We'll have to see that pops back up later on in this series. Iggy now avoiding the flirt for whatever reason, going to step into statues to pick up our inspects. And we're doing so whilst there's an AI here, which may mean that we can't get the inspects that we need, both of them in one go. The queen is going to block us from getting that as well. We're gonna have to visit statues again if we want to complete inspect. You used to joke that you thought I was tilted if I greened my first flirt, but not my second. Greening the first flirt, there it is. Iggy has greened the first flirt in so many games this season, but almost never greens the second. And in one case, it actually cost them a high-rise game as Teal, if I remember right. Um, and it's happening here again. Very fast pacing, aggressive pacing from Iggy. Looks like we're stepping over to pick up the briefcase. Instead, we check our watch instead. Maybe action priority is ruining us here. Also, just tend to be everywhere on the party and you have to imagine that Ascend Beyond has eyes for the Bling Twin. We still need to step over to statues to complete our inspect and oh my goodness we're going back to statues but we're doing it next to Queen again. Queen gets the low light for visiting statues twice and yeah Ascend Beyond brings it back up. He's flirt paired Iggy with Queen here at statues and believes that this could be a spy flirting with a, a, a seduction target. Is this good or bad? On one hand, you are a suspect and you're being watched. On the other hand, you've been flirt paired with the wrong person, potentially, which could absolutely help if you're never near them again. So net positive or net negative? You tell me. 
queen. Looks like she's stepping into conversation with Valzor. No, just taking a bit of a zigzag path around the people who are enjoying a lovely chat over here. Going to step back over to the statue that Iggy the Grifter was just at. A third statue visit for an AI, and finally a Sem Beyond decides that he's going to lowlight them. But I've heard a lot from players who snipe behaviorally and really like to adjust their lowlights. If you are adjusting your highlights and lowlights on people so often, maybe they are just, in fact, the, the spy. The, the contact does make it hard, so that's going to be good for a Sem Beyond. You can believe that you've done right by that. It's going to be another Purloin coming through, and we're not quite at mission completion yet. And it looks like a Sem Beyond's watching the guest list once more. The shot's going to come through. Two failed Purloins, and Iggy the Grifter goes down. That was a fake to cover for the Purloin. It was a very bad fake because the other, the actual DA, was in a conversation with an ambassador and two lowlights. So there was nothing dividing their attention. And Ascend Beyond, I mentioned, their only sniper loss on Courtyard this season was to a white Purloin at the end of the game, to a twin, no less. So this was total PTSD flashback scenario. But this time, Ascend Beyond has learned their lesson, doesn't hesitate, and takes the shot to secure a lead. Going to be 5-3 in the series. First to nine in a best of 16 apart from Iggy who is the highest seed only needs to get to eight as the, there to be no tiebreaker scenarios in this series Iggy the Grifter now stepping in to their first single pick of ballroom here a venue that they've also boasted a ridiculous 100% win rate over six games this season and a venue that I believe Ascent Beyond uh, feels comfortable on, we see it a lot from them, but realistically actually doesn't have very top-end uh, stats as Sniper and Spy. Yeah, uh, there have been some, some missed opportunities in their only non-win of the season, their tie against a Headhunter. They lost to a green Purloin on Ballroom and a swap late on the game at a counterintuitive time, sort of in the wake of the Purloin. So when they actually switch, it's going to be really interesting to see how they respond to Sniper. Purloin's still a weakness. Absolutely. Zen Beyond steps into conversation, picks up a flirt, 45% green test across the conversation here. And it looks like Toby is going to offer us a drink, but Ascendion's not interested in that. Now setting up for a bug path past the ambassador and attempts it. Whilst Iggy looks at statues, the bug does fail. And it seems like Iggy potentially missed it as well. Very uncharacteristic. I've tried plenty of these bugs versus Iggy in the past, and he's been all over them. For whatever reason, Iggy's sniper is, is not quite where it is normally. Yeah, well, partially because maybe they haven't faced a spy who bugs this well. That, though, is very seen. Yeah, you have to think so. And the sniper movement following Seek across the venue, the shot will come through as well. And Iggy going to find a very simple sniper victory here on Ballroom, which was going to help them now focus in to their spiral here and try and beat Ascend Beyond's killer sniper. Of course, I was talking about how good Ascend Beyond's bugs were, and then right after that, they bugged right through the Ambassador's Spleen, right through the Solar Plexus, um, and it was absolutely seen this time by Iggy. You got one by him, you missed one earlier and got away with it, but this time they see the fist and uh, take the shot. Iggy the Grifter over three Spy games has completed Hardtails quite readily on Ballroom this season. Lots of bugs, a bit of a swap, a bit of a purloin there. Seems like we're going for two hardtails and two softtails in most of our Ballroom games. And always a bit of a worry for me specifically when I'm on uh, high rise, uh, sorry, Ballroom, that if you're attempting a hardtail, maybe you get away with the bug, but then you're going for purloin or swap afterwards. You're just giving the sniper too much information and chances to catch you as spy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if Iggy has done their homework, though, they're going to really want to think about purloining in this game. So far, the purloins haven't gone well for Iggy the Grifter. May be enough to defer them from trying it here on Ballroom, but like you mentioned, historically, it has been a hole for Ascent Beyond, and as Smallman, maybe you can get away with it. Attempting a difficult fingerprint on the briefcase, we're not going to hit the green test, unfortunately, though. But we do return it to the Ambassador. No bugging shenanigans just there, and it seems like a Send Beyond was watching pretty closely just in case this moment wanted to attempt it. Yeah, and a Send Beyond's draw, their only draw of the season, they had three sniper losses. All of them were to Purloin, and what's interesting is it was on three different venues, which suggests a kind of systemic problem as opposed to just, oh, it's hard to see on Ballroom or something like that, which is much more common. Iggy hits the two flirt here onto our seduction target, Pearls, and now we're going to look to find more mission progress by heading to middle statues and find ourselves a set of completions here. A fingerprint is here as well. We've already been seen with a briefcase return. Picking up a fingerprint, this could just mean that a Beyond, who's very good at counting missions, 
will be all over Smallman's progress so far. And that might hurt Iggy later on as we will potentially want the, the contact in just a second. Yeah, that's going to be a big deal. Iggy completes fingerprint about a fourth of the time. But in my experience, spies who complete fingerprint a lot also watched for it a lot. And Ascend Beyond completes it more than a third of the time. So I think they're going to be all over the fingerprint. They certainly were earlier in the set. Double idle animation in a conversation. But Ascend Beyond hasn't shown too much ability to snipe for etiquette so far. We request the drink and take it from the waiter here. I believe that there is a fingerprint on it. And it is going to be completed Iggy has three mission completions. The soft tails are now all done. Do we go for the contact and really just dare uh, the shot from Ascend Beyond here? Or are we going to look for a hard tail and go silent? I think a bug might be more effective at this point. I actually don't know if the second fingerprint has been credited, but I don't know if it matters. You saw that aggressive shot earlier, for example. I think it's going to be a little bit like that. They're probably going to credit one of the fingerprints. Center statue, fingerprintable statue, notices fingerprint in general. I think a contact will probably result in a shot, but they're still watching that guest list, so it's not exclusively suspicion for Smallman here. Look at this position in conversation here. Iggy is desperately sipping this drink to get rid of it because yep. the ambassador has not had their personal space violated. This is going to be a bug attempt from Iggy and off it's screen. going to connect. It's off screen behind a pillar. Does Ascend Beyond shoot for pathing nope. alone here? Five seconds. The laser doesn't seem to be swapping on to small man. And Iggy is going to bring things back to even on ballroom with a bug and a half. What's perfect about that is that I mentioned Ascend Beyond's weakness seemed to be Purloin based on that draw earlier, missing three of them. In this case, however, they were zoomed in on the guest list, hoping to compensate for that, and they missed the bug instead. Ascend Beyond may be overcompensating for the Purloin weakness, and instead it's bug that brings them down, and Iggy gets a very big spy win. Huge spy room here on Ballroom for Iggy the Grifter. One that keeps this series locked up and it pushes it back in favor of Iggy the Grifter. Only needs eight points in this series to win it, whereas Ascend Beyond needs the full nine. Now heading on to Library here, Ascend Beyond picking this venue into Iggy the Grifter as they have a 100% sniper win rate over seven games and a mighty 75% spy win rate as well over eight a venue that ascend beyond has burnt me on quite reg regularly and warning track i believe i'm pretty good at library and so i'm worried for iggy the grifter here stepping into this almost hometown venue for ascend beyond well we do have objective proof that you're good at library based on a recent tournament if i recall yeah no uh, I i'm not sure how i feel about that result due to the fact that it ended in less than favorable ways however uh i suppose it's uh it is something you can talk about. Sam Beyond attempts the bug and gets shot for it. Yeah, well, you were in the finals regardless, so a lot of credit. Um, Ascend Beyond, just aggression early, has gotten away with a couple of bugs or bug attempts before getting caught for a subpar bug as Seek on Ballroom. And this is also a subpar bug, and Iggy's all over it. And suddenly, just like that, after being relatively in control early in this match and holding a significant lead, it was a 5-3 lead, Iggy the Grifter has on two separate occasions won three in a row now. Yeah, no, this is huge for Iggy the Grifter, and the series seems to be very wavy in the momentum. No one really holding on to anything here. We talked about Iggy's ability to catch bugs, and especially on these larger venues, you have to be capable. And it shows there that Iggy was watching for it, ready for the bug to happen. Sembion's been shot for bug twice now, one on Ballroom and one on Library in a row. Potentially will have to rethink their play. Now they have to snipe to maintain even uh even potential here to as not lose their position in this game Iggy the grifter oh no yeah that's a huge highlight i think that's a super highlight ascend beyond shoots uh, sorry highlights for the statue inspects uh warning track but that was one of those double take highlights where you're like yeah he missed a part, part yeah that might be really bad and what i'm really interested in with these two three win streaks from iggy is that when ascend beyond their only non-win earlier in the season the draw they were up six to two and they lost to that hesitation on the white pearl i mentioned and they almost got tilted after that they lost the next three and six two went to six six so i wondered is there a potential for tilting here with that lack of experience i mentioned that lack of competition in obsidian that you mentioned iggy has gotten in copper and we might be seeing it here because again all six of iggy's wins have come in little win streaks three each Tempted bug on Kane's side onto a walking ambassador. Doesn't quite connect for Iggy, but also was very much hidden from sniper view. And I don't believe SM Beyond's going to be crediting anything there just now. Very heavy highlighting coming through on those books. 
really wanting to make sure that no one is taking them to the wrong bookshelf here and a lot of attention being held to that. It's going to be inspects completed here for Iggy the Grifter first, really just leaning into suspicion. A lot of players will feel that Kane here is a very suspicious character due to the fact that they all had a very strong walking bug early on in New Art's history in Spy Party. Has been reworked a little bit to provide a little bit more fair uh, comp competition for unfortunate snipers who do go up against this character. However, at the same time, I don't believe really that this character has lost any of its suspicion. And so for Iggy, completing inspects early, picking up fingerprints and just being generally active, this might just mean that Ascend Beyond is watching them like a hawk. That bug, that missed bug is actually very significant. It may not seem like much. Missed bug attempt wasn't seen, no big deal. But Iggy missed a pad earlier. And as I mentioned with that cough earlier, how the spy, how suspicious they think they are determines how they play. The fact that they went for a bug after missing that pad and were not shot for it probably convinces them that they got away with it and now are willing to make steady progress rather than lay low and time out. Seduction targets providing so much help to us in this library game here. Flirt ready to go. Iggy just wants to pause for a second so that they do not get caught for a green test contact that they just achieved here. The flirt comes through, but oh no, it's 99%. We needed to hit the green test, and that just comes down to the fact that we flirted uh, from a statue pad away, two statue pads away at the early game here. Iggy will have to complete one more flirt to complete that mission here. We also need to find a fingerprint and a fifth mission, and I'm not entirely sure what Iggy wants. Yeah, there are a lot of options. What's really interesting to me is that Ascend Beyond is double zooming sometimes on these books to make sure they mark them correctly. But Iggy's transfer microfilm rate is only 7%. Neither of these players, uh, well, actually, Ascend Beyond does it all the time. Iggy doesn't, though. And it's interesting that Ascend Beyond is still banking so heavily on it. Iggy can do all sorts of missions basically for free if they time them with new bookshelf visitors. Time ad comes through from Iggy Grifter. Feeling under the pressure needed to add 45 seconds to the clock white test as well but it doesn't seem like ascend beyond has noticed it in the moment certainly no low lights coming through or highlights either ascend beyond may have heard that beep and realized it's missed but it's too late at this stage to really know who could have done it we have three missions completed we're looking for our fingerprint there's going to be one at green bookshelf in just a little bit that iggy the grifter could attempt if they wanted to but we also need to find a hard tell ascend beyond safety off telling us that they believe that Iggy is the spy, but is going to wait for a mission count before taking a shot. Well, Send Beyond has shown a lot of patience, maybe too much at times, but in this case, I don't think they're gonna let it happen again. Not when it's already happened once this set. You might let it happen once, but this time I think Iggy's gonna get shot if they do much of anything. It's gonna be a purling attempt from Iggy. Seems Looks like, like it. we were setting up for it, but we don't actually go for it. Now stepping over to the bookshelf, but Rocker taking that book has now smudged our fingerprint from the ambassador here. It's going to be a difficult attempt and we fail at red test for Iggy the Grifter not finding the green they needed. 55 seconds left and we're getting a little bit desperate here, warning track. Yep, it's going to be tough now to finish. That was basically your only way to maybe get something by them if you could do it even then because you still need another mission and I think you're going to be stared at here. I think they're going to try to go green swap into wow. something else. Yeah, that's the statue that we started this match off at with the miss pad. I believe the ambassador may have just been over there because otherwise, why would we take the shot? Maybe Ascend Beyond was just that confident that, uh, that, that Iggy was the spy, Kane was the spy there, and we'll take the shot regardless. Yeah, watching the fingerprint pretty close. Maybe did see that pad a little bit, and they just happened to miss the bug entirely. Either way, I think the missed bug without getting shot convinced Iggy that they should keep making progress. Maybe weren't a huge suspect, but they certainly were eventually. And clearly, Ascend Beyond, even if they're maybe not crediting fingerprint, certainly not shooting for that book, recognizing that it's the kind of thing a spy would do is attempt it. Yeah, difficult fingerprint. If it fails, then you go for the cleaner version of the fingerprint at the statue there, and course we could have attempted a fingerprint swap ascend beyond's mission count was on top they needed that uh sp sniper win to to bring things back to even six six as we head on in to terrace a very interesting venue we've seen a lot so far this tournament of position having a bit of an uptick in player interest and uh one that iggy has played a couple times this season uh and has had a, a relatively uh i guess even uh, win rate across Sniper and Spy. Um, not a venue that you, you typically play in SEL, and Ascend Beyond has played it 
and has won both the matches that they did play uh, in one series. But you have to imagine that if Iggy's picking it, that means that they potentially practice it and will feel like they have some tricks up their sleeve. Yeah, it's relegated to certain divisions. Iron and Challenger loved it and, in fact, played it as much as basically all the other divisions combined at that point. And remember, Modern is last. Yes. So this is not necessarily the situation that Send Beyond wanted, but that means that Terrace could be where this match is decided right here, right now. Can one of these players pull ahead of the other? Send Beyond needs to do so with a Spine win and a Sniper win. Early flirt comes through for a send beyond green test, gets us up to 43% and a really good position really for this flirt here with the double agent in between us. We're quite far away from our seduction target. We have seen Iggy uh, potentially tracking flirt, feeling confident that people haven't talked three times at least. Um, and we'll have to see how that affects the send beyond's ability to, to find the flirts and then get away with a uh, hard tail later on in this, this game. Yeah, Send Beyond had a possible bug opportunity there, but I think it's thought better of it. They know Iggy's watching it closely, and the fact they got away with one early might have been a fluke. If you pick General, you're typically looking for a walking bug rather than an in-conversation one, due to the fact that he's so tall, so the lean is very noticeable. Instead, we're going to go to the briefcase and pick up a fingerprint for ourselves here. Returning the briefcase, but no shenanigans, no bugs to be worried about. Right on into conversation with the double agent and our seduction target, but unfortunately we get sunshined. The contact's going to come through anyways, though. Only three people could have a real contact here on Terrace. Now you have to really consider, are you going to frame one of these people? Are you still looking for a mission completion? Yeah, Niggy's going to highlight appropriately, and that's a little counterintuitive, but it might work for exactly that reason. Actually significant that Ascend Beyond just returned that briefcase. They have actually done the bug wall returning the briefcase move before on gallery against a headhunter, something they like to do. So what that tells me is that based on that earlier quick shot, Ascend Beyond may be skewing the bug they've favored all season now. Back into conversation here. Same position we're in before, but further away from our seduction target this time. The white test puts us up to 63%. We have to get a close green. Now, if we want to complete Flirt in three, and that is something that I believe we're going to have to do this game if Seduce is the mission we want to complete here. Yeah, and you might be looking for a difficult again, as I mentioned. I don't know which is more obvious, which is more suspicious against a good sniper. Sometimes the difficult is more suspicious almost, even if you don't want to credit it. But you see here partial progress across a few different missions. Ascend Beyond setting up for a soft tail finish, trying to force Iggy to make potentially a very difficult shot. I failed to notice that Perlon is turned off here on Terrace Warning Track. Instead, we're opting in for Inspect, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Most spies tend to leave the statues off. It is going to be that close green test we needed, but in a very awkward position here inside of another AI. Now we need a fingerprint, and there's three of them going to be available. The briefcase is going to be picked up by Pearls, but there's a print on the statue. There's now a print at the bar as well, but it looks like the statue print. Nope, it didn't get claimed by it. Tapped, it did seem like it was going to. Ascend Beyond, ops for the statue here. The fingerprint will come through, and mission completion will be started here. How confident is Iggy the Grifter? Staring they need the to take the shot here. Staring down the ambassador, wanting to make sure no bugs happen, and that means mission complete is going to come through for Ascend Beyond here. Needed a spy win desperately to stay alive in this series, and they found it. That feels like an adjustment. To send beyond, Bugs gets away with it, Bugs a couple more times and gets shot and says, okay, they're watching Bug. If they're watching Bug, then what can I do while they're watching Bug? In this case, the ambassador is vulnerable. A big suspect is right next to them. So they're staring that down completely. If they catch it for one thing, it means they're not watching something else as much. And in this case, staring at Bug makes fingerprint more viable and a nice, clean, soft tail game gets a send beyond a win that they really needed. They probably need to sweep Terrace here to have a chance because sweeping Modern is that much harder. That yeah. was the game they needed. And if they can convert this next one, they can actually score this upset. Yeah, this could be the game-changing moment for Ascend Beyond here. Due to the fact that Modern typically is a sniper haven, you needed to find your lead here on Terrace. On Iggy the Grifter's pick here, the unusual venue that players are picking up in the tournament position when they feel to be an underdog. It is going to be the inspect removed from the mission uh, list here. Perluin will be activated for Iggy the Grifter here, which is far more typical on Terrace. And as we load on into this game for Iggy the Grifter's Spy, you have to wonder what is going through their mind, what kind of feelings and mental issues uh, that they are battling now that they have fallen down at a very late game in, uh, in the series. 
I'm very impressed by Ascend Beyond's possible adjustment there. I don't know if they are just learning on the fly, realizing Bug is less viable, going for the soft tail. We know they favor fingerprint already. Um, but I think at that point, the fact that Perlin wasn't available maybe just meant Iggy said, okay, this is the only hard tail. So I'm going to dare them to do the soft tail game, and I'm just going to camp the living daylights out of this. But they thought they were going to zig, and they zagged instead. Sembion zooms in, watching that bug path from Iggy the Grifter very closely, but no bug does come through. So far, highlighting for the bar visits here. It was a very ugly start to the bar visits as well. Iggy the Grifter will pick up that highlight for arriving. We're going to select the delegate option and take a drink with us. Could have done a bit of trickery there. Rejected the drink, then repath to the bar so we can get the fingerprint. But Iggy's not trying to be too cute here. Maybe just going for a more consistent spy win instead. You have well, to imagine that you have to... You, you're wondering at this point, how do I find that spy win? How do I find that spy win? And which sniper am I going to get this game? Because we've seen Ascend Beyond shoot a little too aggressively and be overly cautious. So it's really hard to bank on either a shot or no shot. Look at all these lowlights coming off. Yeah, contact comes through and Assembion zooms on in to see that uh, Iggy the Grifter was talking as well. And that's going to be a highlight onto Iggy the Grifter for that contact as well. Delegate comes through and I believe that's what we were intending to do originally. Maybe a little bit too late here for Iggy the Grifter, especially considering there was an AI at bar blocking Kane's journey towards it. Perloin, does it connect? Does it come through? Yes, it does. That's going to be Kane taking the guest list. And now we just need one more flirt to find the spy. Low and wow, low lights the AI who takes it, takes the shot onto Iggy. So confident here for Ascend Beyond. And they found match point in this series. That's the aggression. The BB changed the whole game. Pretty straightforward game until that moment. And I think you're right. Probably a misclick on that second one, although it probably did muddy the waters a little bit. But just tremendous confidence from Ascend Beyond. They didn't even seem to consider that it was anything other than a delegate. And noticing the talk, certainly on the banana bread, seemed to help a lot. Those lowlights flew out of their laser. Yeah, huge stuff coming through. Double talk through as well. Whenever you do hear two contacts back to back, you wonder if a spy has missed clicked their action priority on their right click where they're trying to bug where they're trying to purloin typically on venues that does have a waiter walking around with the tray you consider that purloin may be the mission that they were actually attempting there and when we see kane leave the conversation circle take the guest list there it just lined up too much for ascend beyond they were so happy to take an aggressive shot on terrace and they found themselves in match point in this series not only are they fighting for a win here to progress through the tournament position and find themselves contesting a bronze position but potentially finding a promotion straight on into iron if they can beat iggy in this match it was not just the shot that was aggressive it was really the decision to take those low lights and assume real clearly has decided going into this match maybe from research maybe just out of pure aggression and risk uh taking uh that there are not going to be many fakes uh certainly not intentional ones at least it hasn't burned them yet and it didn't there and it made the shot relatively easy after that choice was made it's not all over for iggy the grifter here a back-to-back -back win on Modern will find them tying up the series and as the highest seed in this promotion match, the tournament position match, they will win the series. But first, it starts with Sniper. Moderna venue, you can feel comfortable that Sniper wins will be a plenty. And that may give Iggy some hope here on this venue. A bug attempt, reverse drive-by, doesn't quite connect, but it was right on camera and it's so still right now. The Sniper yep. is so still. Iggy, <laughs> I have to think, saw it. Yeah, that is such a giveaway sometimes when the sniper's camera doesn't move. That Did I see that? I think I saw that. What do I do? Uh, just wait, I guess. It's in the first minute of a modern game. No reason to shoot yet with the season on the line. Zambion picks up the second flirt. Another white test and our seduction target is going to finally leave the conversation here. Very slow progress here. Burnt by a missed bug as well. Zambion now has to find mission progress somewhere. We're going to step over to the green bookshelf here. And are we going to attempt anything cheeky is the question. Book comes out and it looks like we are going to attempt the microfilm transfer. A white test, a shake of the head. A smil another still camera, but it doesn't seem like this still camera is staring at Iggy, uh, Ascend Beyond. Iggy's eyes are elsewhere. 
This is the last spy game. There's no reason to mess around anymore. There's no reason to be cagey or try to trick them into thinking you didn't see something. If you think it's them, you got to shoot. And pretty interesting, yeah, that that microfilm was apparently not seen. I don't. It's possible you could be 99% sure. That's got to do SMB it. on swipe swaps. You have to think that does it. Finds the shot, lines it up, and brings us back to a double match point play. It all comes down to this warning track. Ascend Beyond sniping for a promotion out of Obsidian and Iggy the Grifter sniping to continue their uh, tournament of position journey uh, and find the only promotion that they can, one from copper into bronze. Ascend Beyond played that game like they knew they had a sniper game on Modern for the win, waiting in the wings, and just wanted to get to it already. They didn't. They, they started bugging again after eschewing it and winning with it. They went right back to their normal play style, pure aggression, even that white swap at the end, which may or may not have been intentional. But either way, they knew that wasn't the game that mattered. The next game is the one that does. So much riding on a single spy game of Modern for Iggy the Grifter who lost their first round in the tournament position to Cotty, the Iron Throne champion, an upcoming star, certainly in the eyes of many in the community here. And if Iggy cannot convert a spy win on one of the most difficult venues to find him, then this will be the end of their tournament of position journey. They will then just be playing gatekeeper to the other players who have lost two matches in this tournament. Ascend Beyond, so much riding on it, but you have to imagine that the nerves are fully stacked in Iggy the Grifter's corner. So many of the best SCL matches in league history have come down to one sniper game on Modern. We saw it in the gold finals, in the plat finals, in multiple KCM Kaylee throwdowns, and now we're seeing it again here in the tournament position. Iggy the Grifter pathing behind the ambassador, but not attempting a bug here. And Ascend Beyond was all over it, not going to no think that bugs have happened just yet. Instead, we're leaning into statues first and picking up a very early highlight. Iggy the Grifter potentially watched the replay on Terrace and went, okay, well, he highlight for bar last time maybe that's what they're going to do on modern but instead ascend going to opt in for statue highlights here and that means that iggy the grifter is glowing white on their crucial spy game but there are a lot of other highlights too, and that's what you want on Modern. You win in Modern by hiding in the crowd because it's such a big crowd and such a big venue. You don't actually get away with stuff when you're watched on Modern. You just get away with stuff because you're not being watched. So those other highlights for the statue visits might be the saving grace, especially if Iggy is paying attention to who they are. Double Agent joins us in conversation here, and it's a fairly decent time to go for a contact. Only going to knock out a couple of players here. Wheels, a statue highlight gets knocked out. Rocker has just been at statues and joins the conversation with SDA. That could line up to be very disastrous for Ascend Beyond's suspicion levels oh, here. Look at those SDAs. Look at those three conversations, each with an SDA in it and only the one hard low light. I think they missed Twin as a possible second one. Tremendous banana bread. That actually gives Iggy a chance here. Flirt's now completed as well. We have Inspect in pocket. Two and a bit mission completions with two minutes left on Modern here for Iggy the Grifter. Ascend Beyond, quite a few highlights on the table, five of them for single statue touches. And looking over towards the bar to see if Purloins have been completed yet. Iggy the Grifter, that might be their next move in this series as Toby offers them the drink and they're going to select the delegate option and yep. we're going to cancel it and we do so whilst reaching for a drink. Ascend Beyond sees it, takes the shot and they're promoted out of Obsidian all the way into Iron with chances of going further towards Bronze. Iggy bets it all on that little move, but doesn't do it quite right. It's actually pretty easy to get away with on Modern, even against a good attentive sniper, if you do it real quick with the Delegate Reject Cheese. But in this case, they wait until they're actually reaching. It's such an obvious animation break. It makes a Send Beyond shot so much easier than it probably would have been otherwise, because that party was not under control at all. Iggy had the situation they needed, but it's just too hard on Modern. You can't even screw up once. They screwed up exactly once. Ascend Beyond caught them and wins a huge And there's Ascend Beyond in the lobby saying, oh my god, I got so lucky seeing that animation break. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. You could tell. You could feel that party slipping away and Ascend Beyond basically confirming it with that message. That party was not narrowed down. There were way too many highlights. They were 
headed for potentially a heartbreaking sniper loss, but saved by the timing of that reject. At that point, I think you just need to take the drink. Wow, that is a heartbreaking way to lose your shot at promotion in the tournament position for Iggy the Grifter. Zero and two after two rounds of this promotion tournament. And Iggy the Grifter no longer can achieve a promotion into bronze. They just don't quite have enough wins so far. Sam Beyond, though, what a star we are starting to see here going undefeated in the Obsidian Division, almost having a perfect season, of course, aided by a couple of forfeits along the way. But you can't hold that against a player when they showcase time and time again that they are uh, able to achieve such strong results here. And now they could potentially go further with their automatic promotion out of Obsidian into Iron. They could even push into Copper or Bronze if they continue to be successful in the tournament At position. Ascend Beyond put us on notice with their username. That's exactly what they've done. They have ascended beyond Obsidian. They're moving on up in the world. And we do have Ascend Beyond willing to join us for a post-game interview if we head on over to headquarters. Uh, we might have Iggy joining us as well. Uh, but I do have a lot of questions for Ascend Beyond that I would like to ask. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm particularly interested in whether or not there were some in-match adjustments there because we saw Ascend Beyond uh, playing the game they want to play, the game they've been playing all season, but then running up against a little more resistance than they did in most of their Obsidian matches and maybe adjusting, particularly in that Terrace game, foregoing those bugs that they've taken in very similar situations earlier. Uh, so I'll be very intrigued. Uh, to see whether or not that was deliberate or if it's more a response to bugs being that much scarier on Terrace. I mean, we started the series off so shaky as Ascend Beyond stopping in the middle of Dead Man's Land on High Rise. Ascend Beyond, welcome to the post match interview. Congratulations on your win and congratulations on your automatic promotion out of Obsidian into Iron. How are you feeling coming off that victory? Uh, can you guys hear me okay? We can, yeah. <clears throat> okay, I'm on kind of a janky headset here, so... Uh, yeah, that was a, uh, a sweaty match. <laughs> oh, you'll have to stay a little closer to the microphone. Oh, yes. can you hear me now? Uh, yes, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, that, that was a, uh, definitely a sweaty, sweaty match. And, and uh, I'm... You know, I was hoping for a lucky break on Modern. Um, I felt like up until that point, the I had a lot of highlights. I felt like the BB was very, very good, um, and was just hoping to catch a break, really. And thankfully, I caught that pretty obvious animation break, uh, which he did pretty much right in front of me. So um, it was a tough match, and I I got lucky there at the end. Well, uh, congratulations to you, uh, taking it away. Iggy, welcome to the, the post-match uh, interview as well. And commiserations for that loss, Iggy. It's been a, a tough tournament of position, two very close uh, matches um, coming through. But you've had an excellent SEL season so far um, and, and, you know, have to show uh, great, um, I guess, congratulations for, you know, coming into SEL this season and, and really proving yourself. Thanks. Dells, uh, I'll let you, um, I guess, take this away since you've you've been watching from the sidelines and I'm sure you have plenty of questions. Oh, sure. I just have some notes on some of the more important moments, but feel free to uh, jump in if you have any other questions. Um, let's dive back in to the very beginning, High Rise. Uh, I don't even know how much there is to say about this, but Ascend Beyond, at the start of the first game, uh, you started by standing in the middle of the hallway on High Rise. Uh, and then had a start read, stop read at the bookshelf. Were you nervous going into this match? I'm sorry, what was your question? Was Were I you nervous going, going into the match? Oh, nervous. No, actually, uh, that was uh, a technical problem on my end. My keyboard, my Bluetooth keyboard, crapped out on me for a half a second, and I couldn't take, I couldn't control. Uh, so... I click my mouse to take to take control from AI and found myself unable to move for about two seconds. That must be a horrible feeling uh, in an SCL match. Uh, it was, yeah, it was terrible. I mean, especially since my, my match against Pox, I was having some, some problems uh, with some FPS issues or lag or whatever. 
And so, you know, of course, I'm thinking, oh, here we go again. Um, <laughs> but uh, luckily, uh, my keyboard, you know, snapped back into action. And, and I either thought to myself, okay, well, that either looks so bad that he thinks that there's no way a player would actually do that, and it must be an AI, or I'm just, or I'm just screwed. So, um, but uh, yeah, that was a little rough. That was an unfortunate start. Not the only bug I want to talk about, though. Uh, there were bugs happening left and right. You got away with one early and got caught for a couple more, and then I noticed you a skewed bug later in the match, particularly in Terrace, with a lot of bug opportunities. You went for the soft tail version of the complete instead. Was that deliberate, where you got caught for a couple bugs and decided, oh, wow, he's really watching it closely? Yeah, I mean, he... he seemed to be catching bugs and also I felt um, I, I was just being I mean, I mean part of that was my it's my fault I was overly aggressive with the bug um, you know that's been my downfall in in past I mean sometimes it works out great for me being that aggressive um, sometimes it's been kind of a downfall and I, I've felt like in my last couple of matches against better players you know playing at obsidian i felt like i was a little bit overpowered in obsidian and i was able to do a lot of things like uh, you know rush aggressive bugs and things like that and get away with it and then it was a real adjustment of play style when i when i started you know playing top and um so yeah i mean i admit i was overly aggressive with the bug a few times and uh and then tried to tamper that down a little bit especially on the uh, the uh, smaller three of five maps, um, especially Terrace, and uh, so yeah, I mean it was it was a, a cog, you know, a, a deliberate choice to to settle down on the bug there, and then of course I, uh, you know, old habits die hard online. <laughs> Great, and <laughs> yeah, that's what we do, uh, Iggy. You were watching Bug pretty much the entire match, it felt like. Uh, missed the first one. That must have been very difficult on High Rise to be watching Bug that closely and miss it. Uh, but caught them all after that. And it seemed like on Terrace, that's the one thing you were determined to not let beat you. Yeah, Terrace, uh, it's most of the... Like, most of the people on Terrace, if they do hardtail, it's Bug. It's easy. And if you miss it, you don't know you miss it right. So I try to... Watch it on terrace. Especially uh, my last match was against Kota, and he usually end up the match on terrace with with bugs. So I think it's stay with me. Uh, and so Iggy, something else I noticed from you uh, a few times during the set, you seem to take sort of intuitive shots on the spy sometimes. Uh, one of those times was on Library, uh, Ascend Beyond was the spy as, I believe, uh, Kane, is that correct? And went in for um, a statue visit at the end on statues, which he had already inspected, but you were so sure of it uh, that you took the shot. Uh, and then another time was very early in the set uh, on the third High Rise game, uh, Ascend Beyond went in to get a print on the statues on the right and got shot uh, there, even though there hadn't really been a contact or anything yet. Uh, can you explain to us what made you Beyond went in. so sure that Ascend Beyond was the spy uh, in that High Rise game? Uh, just to wait. I think the library game, it was me, the sniper. Yeah, uh, no, yeah you were the spy, by the yeah, way. Oh, shooting then you. Then yeah. I got that very wrong. The uh, the the high rise mm. game certainly. Uh, Ascend beyond completed fingerprints at statues. Had only been to statues once. Flirted twice. Um, yeah. and you took a, a very aggressive shot on them. I I check what uh, statue were uh, ambassador and the mom goes on the same statue. So it was. He had uh, statues done and uh, my fingerprint done, so I just shot him. Just be sure. I see. And SM Beyond. Um... I was quite surprised I had been shot on that game. Actually, I thought that that was the one, uh, the one spy game where I, I I really thought I was home free there, and was actually quite surprised to have been shot. Right. Warning Track and I kind of talked throughout the series. Um... I guess specifically um, referencing your 
last SEL match versus the Headhunter and how a um, unfortunate miss of a white purloin when you were very far up in the series, I believe 6-3, was it 6-2? Six, 6-2. Two. Six, two. Um, then led to a, just a sweep from the Headhunter. Do you find that, um, that that first game, and I mean, I can relate, um, when you've been dominating, uh, kind of hurt your your confidence uh, as a, a player and then put you in a position where um, you were either desperate as a sniper or spy or felt like you were just seeing things from that point onwards? Is that like something that you've experienced then playing against Pox and, 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 and the Iggy? Well, I, I mean, on that... Uh... On that courtyard game against the headhunter, um, I actually I 100% knew he was the spy. I it was a situation where it was really a miscalculation by me. I thought that there was less time on the clock when that prolong came off than there was, hmm. uh, and I thought it was going to go to OT. And while I was 99% sure he was the spy, I mean he prolonged right in front of me, and and even prior to that I knew it. Uh, but uh, I, I thought it was going to go OT. Um, it was just really a stupid miscalculation on my end. And, you know, then the clock ticked down to about three seconds and all of a sudden things paused and I went, oh, shit. <laughs> right. Uh, so, and that's another thing I, I really, I mean, that the headhunter match and not shooting him on a courtyard kept me awake for about two days afterwards. <laughs> Uh, and I, I'm not kidding. And uh, no, no, I'm, I, I mean, and, morning uh, tracking and, and, and I constantly sharing horror stories of uh, yeah. SCL. So, stress, so, so. I, I really, on since then, I've really, uh, on, on the sniper side, you know, I told myself if, if I thought it was somebody, I was just going to shoot, um, you know, and, and forego the style points of uh, waiting to shoot them in OT. Um, and so I think. I think you probably saw that on um, on uh, Terrace when when uh, when Iggy was Orange Sorry. I took mm. a pretty aggressive shot because you know I was just like I'm pretty sure it's it's him. It's a three of five map, which I have a tendency to to wait too long to see something obvious. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm my sniping style is more of a camping style uh, primarily, and um, I was like, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to let this happen again. I'm taking the damn shot. So, and what uh, what led you to to finding Iggy uh, more suspicious than say Pearl or Kane, who uh, theoretically could have been involved in that uh, direct um, direct Pearloin or, or um, you know uh, delegated Pearloin? Yeah. So, so um, he had BB twice, like in a row and was talking during both of them. Mm. Um, and, um, and I, and I noticed that, and then the purloin came off. I think, I think he went to bar almost right after, um, and, uh, and got a drink and then delegated very shortly after that. So just that sequence of events, um, I, I thought, what are the likelihood that he's talking during both back to back DVs? I mean, for, for an AI to have done that, an AI would have basically had to double talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I guess that's uh, it's it's fairly um, easy, I suppose, to 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 consider that a, a confirmation of spy. And I think on on three or five venues, you you do need to um, kind of read into more the behavioral mm-hmm. element of characters like that to be able to find the the successful shot here. Uh, you yeah. talk about your obsidian journey and how you felt like. Um... Hang on, hang on one second. No worries. No worries. Del, do you have any questions for Iggy? We, uh, we wait? Um, I guess really the only question I wanted to ask Iggy was on the uh, Modern game when Iggy was sniping. Uh, we were a little bit curious about uh, whether or not the bug was seen. Um, Ascend Beyond as Duke uh, goes for a bug as the ambassador is leaving conversation at 3 minutes 50 and your laser just kind of stares right in that general direction um duke later gets shot for doing a white swap and uh, we were just wondering if you were onto that bug or not um, no i i wasn't i saw the transfer actually mm-hmm. because uh i know the 
Ariant uh, likes to do the microfilms, and I'm bad at bookshelves generally. So I try to watch people with books in hands. And I saw some weird animations, so I wasn't sure. And then he confirmed it by the statues. But the bug, I didn't see. All right. And yeah, the other major, I would say maybe the craziest game of the whole set, I'd love to hear both players' perspectives on this, was the third game of Courtyard. Ascend Beyond was playing as Orange Sari, uh, got away with a swap unseen from Iggy's sniper rotation, uh, and then eventually got low lit, but still had trouble getting the flirt done. Um, Iggy, what what was going through your mind? When did you notice the swap, and what did you try to uh, do to sort of catch up at that point? I noticed the swap after... I don't... Uh, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I noticed the swap after the uh, who were there. Yeah, um, my theory at the time was that you were, it's because uh, both the ambassador and Toby were on the other side of the venue, and you seem to be, again, as I mentioned earlier, selling out on catching bug this uh, match. Was that basically what it was? Just divided attention among the hardtail sites? Yeah, that's true. Um, did, he, I mean, did he shoot me on that game for that last foot? I don't no, know. you won, yeah, and that's what I wanted AI to ask you, Ascend Beyond. What was going through your mind in those last 30 seconds as you realized that you got away with a swap, but were still at major risk of timing out? Had to three-cycle on the statues. You had to yeah, I, I actually was, was fairly confident that he had not seen that swap, um, so that that's why I three-cycled. I, I felt like you know, it was the end of the game. There was probably a lot of chaos that he was looking for. It was unlikely that he was going to catch me for a three cycle. And I thought that there was a decent chance that I might be low lit. Um, but I was 90% confident that he hadn't caught the swap. I mean, just my game sense told me that it was, you know, it was, it was good. So yeah, I, I, wasn't, too, I wasn't really worried about the time. I, I caught the swap after your second visit of the statue. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it's a green swap because you right. were okay. low light, right? So yeah, yeah, you low light him after he uh, goes to the statues. Ascend um, swap has been a, a mission that you haven't completed very often uh, so far throughout SCL season five here, um, and in courtyard never. Um, but in this doubled courtyard game uh, today, you you swapped twice. One a white test which got you shot, but then the second one a green test. Uh, which made you a spy win. Where did this adaptation come from? Um, it was really just situational. I mean, on the Orange Sorry game, I just I felt that all of his concentration was on the other side of the map. It was very busy on the other side of the map, and um, he seemed to not be not care about the side that I swapped on at all. So it was really just a situational thing. But um, also, I mean, I've, I've I do try to. Uh, to uh, purposely mix up my game a bit. Um, I understand that there's a decent number of games in the system of me now, and and people definitely notice certain things. Uh, Some of the guys in the Obsidian um, uh, group on Discord, you know, we have our own little group there, have pointed out a couple things to me um, that they've noticed. Um, And so, you know, I'm aware that, that, that this game has gotten unbelievably competitive now and you know there's guys out there that have just a couple hundred games that you know can compete with guys that have thousands of games and so you know i think you have to be aware of your tendencies and and purposely mix them up i think if you look at my mission spread i'm pretty i'm pretty spread out um, and that's certainly on purpose yeah no i mean it's certainly showing success you spy win rate across the board this uh, so far in, in SEL has been uh, absurdly high, uh, 65%, um, with a very solid sniper win rate as well. Certainly yeah. uh, one of the, the favorites to go forward and, and earn higher division uh, promotions to divisions here in the tournament position. Um, congratulations on promoting out of Obsidian into Iron. Um, is bronze the, the true goal, or would you be happy with an Iron promotion? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, I'd like to go as high as possible. I, when I, 
when I joined SCL, it was my first SCL. Um, I had way more games than anybody in Obsidian. I, 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 I really just, I didn't know how well I would compete in a competitive setting against everybody else. And so I just had myself placed as low as I possibly could be placed. And, you know, I did quite well, obviously. And so now I'm, uh, you know, interested to see how high I can go. I think I could definitely hang, um, you know, hang in bronze if, if I was able to get there. Oh, well, wish you well in, uh, in potentially achieving that. Unfortunately, Iggy, um, that, that kind of closes out your promotion uh, ability here in the tournament position. But uh, so commiserations on that, but congratulations on a, an excellent SEL uh, five so far and, and can't wait to, to see what you both uh, achieve um, in the, the next season of SEL and of course other tournaments that we have here in Spy Party. So thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for, for uh, being here with us for this post-game interview and, and good luck with the, the rest of your tournament position. Thank you, guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for casting and uh, shout out to Obsidian Gang. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, that closes out this uh, match here that we've had uh, round two of the tournament of position um, here for postseason of the Spy Party Competitive League 5. Ascend Beyond uh, achieving their promotion from Obsidian to Iron uh, with further promotions available. Copper and Bronze still up for grabs in rounds three and four if they are up to continue being successful here. We'll have to keep track of their journey uh, with two more rounds to go here, Dells. Uh, it's been excellent uh, for covering this with you, gentlemen, and, and Dells. Thanks for, uh, for for hosting and being such a um, a solid um, uh, asset to the, the interviews as well. Thank you, and thank you to Warning Track, and thank you to everyone for watching. Coming up this week, we still have a few more casts. There's going to be one more uh, live cast coming up. That is Thursday, uh, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. PDT. We have Zero Doom from Copper facing JD105L, also uh, from Obsidian. Uh, Zero Doom placed one spot higher than Iggy in Copper, and JD placed one spot below Ascend Beyond in Obsidian. So we're going to be seeing another match between players from the same divisions, and then you can tune in at the usual time on weekends to see uh, the matches from the upper half of the Tournament of Position bracket, the people who already won their first match and uh, have gold division on the line. Thank you, everyone, and have a good afternoon.